friends welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here i have another ww weekly meal prep coming your way i have a breakfast a lunch and a really really good dessert from my good friend barrett over at ww living life on track definitely check her channel out if you haven't already i cannot wait to share these three recipes with you so if you want to see what i have in store for you for this week's meal prep just stay tuned <music> breakfast this week I'm going to be making a blueberry walnut baked oatmeal this is so perfect for this time of year hearty warm delicious super excited for this recipe I'm going to pair this with some fruit and possibly some egg whites just depending on if I have time to make them in the morning and both of those items would add zero points to my breakfast but give me that little boost of protein so let me show you what is in my blueberry walnut baked oatmeal you're going to need some rolled oats, not the quick cook kind, your traditional rolled oats. Whatever sweetener you want to use, I'm going to be doing the Lakanto monk fruit. Milk of your choice. You could do almond milk, but I'm going to be using this Fairlife fat-free milk. Salt, baking powder, vanilla extract. I'm going to be doing some vanilla bean paste. It's just a sub for vanilla extract. Ground cinnamon. You'll also need one egg light butter, walnut pieces, frozen or fresh blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, mixed berries, whatever you want. I'm gonna use the leftovers of both of these bags of the frozen blueberries and two ripe bananas. So let's get started on our baked oatmeal. So to get started on our oatmeal, we're gonna go ahead and take a decent sized bowl. To that bowl, we are going to add two cups of rolled oats. We are also going to add half of our walnut. So this is one half of a cup. So I'm just going to add about half of that to the oat mixture. We're going to put in a little bit of salt. So we want about a half of a teaspoon, a scant half of a teaspoon. So not too much, just enough to kind of help bring out those flavors. We have some ground cinnamon. We want about one and a half teaspoons. I love cinnamon. So I might even do just a little bit more, a little extra cinnamon never hurt. We're also going to add one third cup of, I'm gonna use the monk fruit, but whatever sweetener you're using. And then lastly, we're gonna add one teaspoon of our leveling agent, which is our baking powder. And then we're gonna give this a stir together. Just make sure everything gets nice and combined. You want that salt mixed in really, really well, as well as that cinnamon. And then we're ready to move on to the next step of our baked oatmeal. Next, we're going to mix together our two cups of milk. Now, you have the option of using sugar or maple syrup in the recipe. I opted for sugar. Just so you know, though, if you don't have a sugar alternative available, you can always use the sugar-free maple syrup, and it will not change the points. And then we're also going to add one cracked egg. I always pre-crack my eggs because I am notorious for shells and... That's gross. And then we're also going to add our vanilla extract, which is about a teaspoon. And again, I'm using the vanilla paste or vanilla bean paste. So I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of that. And then lastly, I have some melted butter here that I've let somewhat cool. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And the reason for that is it'll scramble our egg and we don't want to do that because that too is not appetizing. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. We wanna make sure our egg gets broken up, everything gets nice and combined, and then we're gonna be ready to assemble our baked oatmeal. We're now ready to put together this oatmeal. So I've went ahead and sprayed my nine by nine baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. I did slice my two bananas into rounds and we are going to take these and put these just along the bottom of our pan until we have a nice layer of bananas over the entire bottom of our pan. Mm -hmm. 
We have our bananas in a single layer on the bottom of our baking dish. The next step is we're gonna take two thirds of our berries and we are going to kind of sprinkle these over the top of the bananas. Make sure that you only use about two thirds because we wanna reserve the rest for the rest of our oatmeal. So again, you can really use any berry that you want. I love blueberries. That's what I had in my freezer and I wanted to kind of use them up. I've been on this kick lately about cleaning out my fridge and freezer and kind of using up what I have. So because I had those couple little bags of blueberries, I thought I'm gonna go ahead and use those up. So there they are layered on top of the bananas. We're ready to add that walnut cinnamony oat mixture. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this right over the top of our blueberries and bananas. And this is what's going to create that really yummy oatmeal baked kind of crust. It's gonna be delicious. So we'll go ahead and get our oatmeal nice and spread out evenly over our berries. And then the last step before it goes into the oven is we're gonna to top it with the remainder of our berries as well as the remainder of those walnuts. Before we add our berries and walnuts, we do wanna take that milk and egg mixture and we are going to pour this as evenly as we can over the top of our oats. You wanna make sure that you get some of that milk and egg mixture over every bit of your oats only because you want them to bake. Otherwise, they'll just come out a crunchy oat and you want it to be more of a bake. So go ahead and pour that over the top. And then we're gonna take our pan and give it a couple of good whacks on our counter. And that's gonna make sure that that liquid kind of gets dispersed down amongst all of the bananas, oats, and blueberries. Before we add our berries and walnuts, we do want to take that milk and egg mixture and we are going to pour this as evenly as we can over the top of our oats. You want to make sure that you get some of that milk and egg mixture over every bit of your oats only because you want them to bake. Otherwise, they'll just come out a crunchy oat and you want it to be more of a bake. So go ahead and pour that over the top and then we're gonna take our pan and give it a couple of good whacks on our counter and that's gonna make sure that that liquid kind of gets dispersed down amongst all of the bananas, oats, and blueberries. And lastly, we're going to take the remainder of our berries and our walnuts, and we're just going to put them right over the top of our oatmeal. You guys, this looks good. I can smell the cinnamon. Uh, it should be absolutely delicious. And then once this is done, this is going to go into your oven at 375 minutes for about 35 to 45 minutes. It's just, again, going to depend on how your oven cooks. So let's get blueberries spread out and then we'll add those walnuts and we're ready to put this into the oven. And there we are, we're ready to go into the oven. This looks amazing. So again, 375 for 35 to 45 minutes. The blueberry walnut bag just came out of the oven, you guys. Look at how amazing this looks. My house smells so good. I really wish we could translate our smells through the camera to you guys because it smells really good in here. So I'm gonna let this cool for just a few minutes so it'll make it a little bit easier to cut. I'm going to cut mine into six servings. I'll put it into my meal prep container and I'll show you what a serving looks like, what I'm having for breakfast, and I'll give you the smart points. So here is breakfast for the week. I have one sixth of my oatmeal bake. This is a blueberry walnut oatmeal bake. You guys look at how amazing this looks. It is a very moist. It almost wanted to fall apart when we were pulling it out of the pan. Maybe if we let it sit and cool a little bit longer, but it is so moist. I did try a little bit of it. It is delicious. It is so blueberry and those nuts give that nice added crunch. Absolutely divine. What a filling delicious breakfast. So I have one sixth of the blueberry walnut oatmeal bake. That is six smart points. I'm pairing that with just some red grapes. And like I said, if I have time, I'll fry up a couple of egg whites for a little bit of added protein and an additional zero smart points. I am following the green plan. The only plan that the points would change on this particular dish is purple because oats are free or zero on the purple plan. But all of the recipes in my Facebook group are listing all three plans. So if you're not part of my Facebook group, definitely join that because you can go and see all the recipes and get all the different plan color points. So it makes it super easy. So my breakfast with the grapes and a couple egg whites if that's what I choose and one sixth of my oatmeal bake 
is six smart points. For my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making a copycat Taco Bell quesadilla. Supposedly this recipe is better than the real thing. So let me show you what is in our quesadilla. You're going to need some salt, paprika, cumin, and garlic powder, jalapenos, and you are going to be using some of the juice as well, light mayo. I'm gonna be doing a mix of the Trader Joe's light Mexican blend and fat free cheese. That will really help cut down on the points. Also, you'll need some Velveeta slices, some sort of a tortilla. I'm gonna be doing the Olay Extreme Wellness Wrap and some chicken. So let's get started on our lunch meal prep. So the first thing for our quesadillas is, is we need to go ahead and cook our chicken so that we can get it shredded. So I went ahead and trimmed all the visible fat. I am just going to boil my chicken. I think it's going to be the fastest way to cook it and it makes it really, really easy to shred that way rather than pulling out my Instant Pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my couple of chicken breasts in here. We're gonna let these get cooked through nice and boiled. We'll shred them up and then let me move in to showing you how to make the sauce for the quesadilla. So let's go ahead and put together the sauce for the quesadillas. So I modified the recipe a little bit. I weighed out four ounces of light mayo here in my bowl. The original recipe called for a cup and that was just too many points. So I'm gonna make do with this. So I have one, or I'm sorry, four ounces of light mayo. To that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the juice from the jalapenos. I am not a big spicy person, so I don't want it super, super overly spicy. So again, that was a modification that I made. I am going to link the original recipe down in the description box below for you guys. And then I went ahead and chopped up about two tablespoons of jalapenos and minced those together. And then we're going to add some seasoning. So first we're going to do a little bit of salt. And then we are going to do some smoked paprika and some cumin and this is a copycat of the taco bell quesadilla sauce so this should taste extremely similar and then a little bit of garlic powder and then we're going to go ahead and mix this all together it smells delicious and then we're going to just go ahead and cover it with some saran wrap and throw it into the fridge while we put together our quesadillas but there is our taco bell quesadilla sauce so I went ahead and got my chicken all shredded once it cooled from boiling, so this is perfect. I also pulled out my sauce, and what I'm gonna do is remove about half of the sauce, maybe a little less than half, uh, for dipping. So when we go to eat the quesadilla, I wanna be able to have a little bit of sauce to dip my quesadilla in. And then we are actually going to add our chicken in with the remainder of the sauce and give it a good toss, make sure that chicken gets nice and coated in the sauce. That is gonna be an absolutely delicious filling in our quesadilla. So we just wanna make sure that we get our chicken nice and covered in the sauce. And then that's it, you guys. We're ready to start cooking down our quesadilla and getting it ready to go. So I realized that I did only do four ounces of the light mayo for the sauce. So I decided to go ahead and just use all of the sauce to mix in with the chicken to make it a little bit more creamier. And then what I'll probably do is dip my quesadilla either in some queso or some salsa or sour cream. And then that way my chicken is a little bit creamier for the filling. So we're ready to start our quesadillas. So I have two of my Olay Extreme Wellness Wraps. I'm going to place one into the bottom of my pan. To that wrap, I'm going to be adding one slice of my Velveeta cheese. And I'm gonna kind of tear mine into strips and then in half again, because I do wanna kind of have a little bit of Velveeta in each part of my tortilla. The original recipe wanted you to use two slices, but I'm just doing one to save on points. Oh, we got a little fold up going. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and add one fourth or about half of a cup of our chicken mixture to our quesadilla. 
and I'm just gonna spread that out. I, again, I want a little bit of chicken in each bite of my quesadilla, but you also wanna keep away from the edges about at least a half of an inch, just so all of the yumminess stays in the filling of your quesadilla. So see how I have that edge of the tortilla? You definitely wanna have that. So there is the chicken. And then I went ahead and measured out one half of a cup of the Trader Joe's light cheese and one and a half cups of the fat-free cheese. So I'm just going to divide this evenly among all four quesadillas. This is the cheese that really has the majority of the points and then same with the fat-free. So this is going to be very, very cheesy with that Velveeta, the fat-free cheese and that nice light cheese from Trader Joe's. So look at how good that looks, you guys. And then we're just going to top it with our second tortilla and i always like to give it a push because it is warming up as we're kind of assembling our quesadilla and then i'm going to let this cook on one side for just a couple of minutes we'll flip it over then we're going to repeat until we've made all four quesadillas so I did decide to go ahead and spray a little bit of nonstick cooking spray on my quesadilla shell. I think it's going to brown a little bit more that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get it flipped over. I can see that things are starting to melt, but it's not browning like it normally does when I add the nonstick spray. So just a tip to go ahead and spray just a little bit of nonstick spray over your tortilla. deliciousness so my quesadillas are done so my plan with these is I am going to cut them I'll show you guys what the inside looks like I'm gonna cut them in half and then I'm going to cut them in half again to make those perfect squares or triangles I should say like Taco Bell so you can't really see that well on the inside but oh it is like chicken and cheese, oh uh, yum. So what I'm gonna do is cut these each into four pieces. And then I am going to just stack them and wrap them in some foil. And then these can be reheated multiple ways. You can pop these into the microwave. You can also pop them into the air fryer, the oven, you know, if you want them nice and crispy, you can go ahead and put them into the oven, but I am just going to wrap them in foil. They are pretty nice. They are pretty cool now. They've been sitting here for a little bit. And then I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and then each day I'll just take out one of my little foil packet of quesadilla. So let me get these all packaged up and then I'll be back to show you exactly what I'm gonna be having for lunch and give you the smart points. So here are my lunches for the week. So let me show you what I'm having. So I have my four quesadillas wrapped in foil. So for the quesadilla, using two Olay Wellness Wraps, the sauce that's on the chicken, the chicken itself, because I'm on the green plan, so I have to count my chicken, all the things, the cheese, all the deliciousness for the quesadilla is nine smart points. So that includes everything. So not bad at all for a Taco Bell copycat quesadilla. I'm gonna pair that with a red pear for zero. And then for dessert, I'm gonna be having one of the Trader Joe's vanilla meringues. These are huge. And these are one smart point a piece. So my lunch will be 10 smart points. Now, if I decide to add some sort of a sauce or something to dip my quesadilla in, I was considering maybe queso or sour cream. I will add additional points, but I think it's gonna be really good on its own because the flavor of that chicken is delicious. So I'm gonna count this as nine smart points and one for the meringue. So this is a 10 smart point lunch. For a sweet treat this week, I'm gonna be making Barrett Pastor over at WW Living Life on Tracks YouTube channel. I'll put that here on the screen for you guys. She is my good friend and she said this is delicious. So 
I am going to make her cranberry fluff recipe. I am making one modification only because I did not have the item on hand. So let me show you what is in Barrett's cranberry fluff. You're going to need some crushed pineapple, non-fat Greek yogurt, light, fat-free, sugar-free, whatever you have of whipped topping. She uses Lily's. I am going to be using Bake Believe semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to be counting my points the same as hers with the amount of chocolate chips that I'm going to be using, just a different brand. Also, you'll need some fresh cranberries, vanilla extract, mini marshmallows, and her recipe is sugar-free vanilla pudding. I don't have vanilla, so I'm going to be using sugar-free white chocolate. I think this is going to be delicious with that. So let's get started on our cranberry fluff. So the first thing we need to do for our cranberry fluff is get some water to a boil and we're going to be adding in half of our bag of cranberries and we just want these to be in here for about 10 minutes or so just until they start to pop and then we're going to add them in with all the rest of our fluff ingredients. Our cranberries are cooking away. See how they're starting to pop and open up? That's exactly what you want them to do. Once that starts to happen, we're gonna go ahead and just drain them, and then we're ready to put together our fluff. It's very, very simple. Cooking the cranberries takes the longest. So we're ready to put together our cranberry fluff. Here are my cranberries drained, cooked. They smell amazing. In my bowl here, I have 10 tablespoons of light whipped cream. I just measured it out on my food scale. It is 45 grams total to that. We're gonna add one cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. She says that you cannot taste the yogurt in this recipe, so that's pretty exciting because a lot of people don't like the taste of yogurt. I don't mind it, but a lot of people don't like the taste of the non-fat Greek yogurt. So I'm just gonna kind of stir as I go. To that, we're also going to be adding in one tablespoon of our pudding. So again, I used the white chocolate just because I didn't have the vanilla. I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I went ahead and measured out my chocolate chips. So we'll go ahead and put those in. Also, 20 mini marshmallows. So I just counted out 20 of those. And then we're going to add half of our can of crushed pineapple. So I just put about half the can in to my bowl there. I'm going to give this a stir before I add in my cranberries. So, oh my gosh, this looks delicious. All right, so there is the fluff so far. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop in our cooked cranberries. And we're gonna give that another stir until those are combined. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. Barrett says, this is amazing. So I am really excited to have this this week. I'm going to go ahead and put this into the refrigerator. Give it a chance to cool a little bit. You've got marshmallows. You've got chocolate chips, whipped cream, cranberries. Yum. So here is the cranberry fluff. I'll be back once it's cooled a little bit to show you a serving size and give you the smart points. So here's our cranberry fluff. I pulled it out of the refrigerator and served up a serving. So the entire batch makes six servings. So in my cute little Christmas getting festive wine glass, I have one serving of the cranberry fluff. So it fills about half of my glass up. So that's quite a good amount. And one sixth of the cranberry fluff is only two smart points. It is absolutely delicious with the cran or with the cranberries, the pineapple, the chocolate, you get a little marshmallow here and there. Absolutely, positively a must make recipe. And for two smart points, you can't beat it. So here's what I'm going to be having for snacks this week. As always, my morning snack is a built bar. You know, these are my very, very favorite thing. This is the coconut almond. This is actually my very favorite flavor. This particular built bar and all of the built bars with the exception of the peanut butter are only three smart points and they are about 110 to 130 calories this particular one has 18 grams of protein seven fiber three sugar and five fat so they keep you nice and full with the protein and the fiber and the fat and it is so good you guys this is an almond joy this is a healthy almond joy it has flakes of coconut little bits of almond and again three smart points 
so good. The peanut butter is also delicious. So definitely head over to Built Bar. My code is here on the screen. It'll give you 10% off in free shipping. Check them out, you guys. If you're looking for a protein bar that doesn't taste like a protein bar, this one is literally a candy bar and it is three smart points, the lowest pointed protein bar on the market and the best tasting. So head over to Built Bar, use my code to save 10%. Keep my code because it's reusable, which is amazing. So Built Bar is my morning snack. I'm also going to be finishing up my hip peas. I picked these up after Halloween. So these are the Halloween version of the hip peas. They're about to expire in about another week or so. So I want to finish them up. I do really like them. They are delicious. And this little baggie here is two smart points. And this is the vegan white cheddar. Really, really good. And then I'm also going to be having an iconic protein shake. I haven't had one of these in a while and I kind of forgot about them. So I'm excited that I rediscovered them. This is the Cafe Latte. This is a grass fed protein shake. 20 grams of protein, three sugars, and only 130 calories. This particular one does have caffeine in it because it is the Cafe Latte. You guys, this is way better than Premier Protein as far as taste goes and ingredients. The ingredients in Premier Protein is a little scary. Here are the ingredients in this protein shake. So all things you can pronounce, these are delicious. They are sweetened with monk fruit, which is honestly the best sweetener alternative for you. These are really, really, really delicious. I like them by themselves, cold or over ice, but you can also put this into coffee and just elevate that latte or coffee flavor as well. Two smart points, so good. If you're interested in Iconic Protein, I'm gonna put my code here on the screen for you. And there's also a link down in the description box for you to pick up Iconic. They have several flavors and all of them are delicious. And again, two smart points, cannot beat it. So there are my snacks for the week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing these three recipes. They are all absolutely must have such great food for this time of year and definitely helps you stay on track by giving you that satisfaction of something sweet and some comfort food. Definitely recommend all three recipes. They will be linked down in the description box below. Also in the description box is all of my discount codes, website links, my happy mail, my Facebook group, you name it, everything you need to know is down in the description box. So definitely check that out as well. If you are new, welcome. I'd love it if you would join my YouTube friends and family and hit that little subscribe button. Also hit that little notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on this one. It really helps my channel out, puts it in that YouTube algorithm. So thumbs up if you love meal prep. And of course, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of these three recipes and if you're gonna give them a try. Happy holidays and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.